All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank everybody for coming. We're going to uh, open up in a word of prayer real quick. And Brother Otis will come and lead us, lead us in a word of prayer, and we'll get started. That's great. Father in heaven, we approach your wonderful throne of grace. To, first of all, I'll tell you we love you. We thank you for all the good things you do for us, most of all for your son that you gave to be our Savior. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to come and listen to men who are in the know on situations that we face today. I ask you to bless this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to introduce a couple of the speakers. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, brave in the cold weather. Uh, myself, this is Captain Fred Butler with the Sheriff's Department and Sheriff James Campbell. Uh, here in Cherokee County also. And uh, we're gonna be kind of doing a question and answer. We are a little short slideshow to go over. And at any point during the slideshow, you've got a question, we want you to raise your hand. This is what it's all about, is just getting familiar with, with the new laws that is coming out. Uh, Texas is the 45th state in the United States that has passed over here. So this is, we're kind of on, we're behind in the game per se. Uh, we're not starting a new trend by any means. We're the 45th state that, uh, that's participating in something like this. Uh, I will tell you, the law when our lawmakers made this law, it was, hey, we want open carry, and we want it on a belt holster, we want it on a shoulder holster, and we're gonna make it effective January the 1st. Pretty much, that's the extent of the law. Uh, they didn't really go into any great uh, detail, great thinking when they made this law. There's a lot of gray areas uh, and that's all going to come down the pipes throughout case law and uh, and stuff to come. We're going to tell you what we know. We're going to tell you the law and uh, if you got any questions, like I say, we, we want you to ask questions and uh, let's get started. Hey, you going to pay attention? <laughs> Hit the space bar. Okay. Amid the old wild, wild west, like I say, I don't think we're going to come out here and everybody's going to, it's going to be like the wild, wild west. We are the 45th state in the U.S. that, that has participated in this. Uh, I don't think you're going to see any shootouts in the saloons. Uh, most everybody that is carrying now will probably still conceal carry. I don't think there's going to be just you're gonna see everybody in town. When you come to the grocery store, you're gonna see 14 people walking around with guns strapped on their heads. I may be wrong, I just don't think so. Uh, it's not an old wild, wild west. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's not an old myth that, that we're gonna to have to worry about. The reality is, they're gonna be good people. Everybody that <clears throat> is going to be carrying openly, you're going to have to have a license. And in order to get that license, you're gonna to have to go through classes just like people had to go through to get their concealed handgun license. Pretty much the law is the same. The concealed handgun license and the new law, the new license is called a license to carry, an LTC. Instead of a CHL, now it's an LTC. And uh, <clears throat> they've taken concealed handgun license and stricken that and inserted license to carry. The exact same thing. There's very few minor changes uh, in it. But like I say, it's it's the reality of it is, is is these are good people that's going to be carried most of the time. Now, if the question was if you didn't hear it, are you going to get another license? No, you're not. If you have a concealed handgun license now, currently, you'll be grandfathered in. Whenever you renew it, you will have they'll send you the new license and it looks just like your driver's license. They're going to have the words license to carry instead of concealed hanging license. You're not going to have to go through any, any different classes or anything like that. You'll be grandfathered in. Any other questions before we move on? You have House Bill 910. I'm going to leave that up there and let you read it real quick. You had one in the back. Got it. Yes, sir. You said 95, uh, uh, 45 of the states are already. Texas is the 45th state in the United States that has a open carry policy. I've never realized that. I thought most states didn't even allow the concealed handgun. 
No, no, Texas, this is, we're the 45th state that has this. The states that are not are California, Florida, I think one of the Dakotas maybe. South, sure the, South, the, I know California and Florida South Dakota is open that, carry. that are not currently, oh, that don't currently have. All these states honor Texas license? No, no they won't. You got anything you want to add to that? Have you, you seen any research? No, dear, your handgun class, your concealed license carry class, they'll tell you which, which states allow, no to her. Reciprocal, yeah, reciprocal states of Texas. In other words, they, they uh, look at Texas law as good enough that, that they'll let you carry. In South Carolina, just a couple of days ago, struck the reciprocity Some of them are. Well, actually, Virginia just a couple of days ago, Virginia. 25 states. Virginia is the only one. Yes. Here you go. Virginia just struck specificity law, uh, and they don't recognize 25 states uh, handling licenses. So whenever you leave the state, you've got to check and see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If, if you leave the state of Texas and you're traveling across three or four or five states, make sure that they do honor the Texas license. That's a good question. Any other questions? All right, the House Bill 910. I don't know if you, this is the, the House bill that, that, a lot, that goes into effect January the 1st. Anybody got any questions on it? The question is, if you can't hear him, what he asked was, the last bullet point is, is on holsters. The, the law says that it has to be a shoulder holster or a belt holster. There is hundreds of thousands of different kinds of holsters out there. There's, I mean, if it's attached to the belt or if it's attached to the shoulder, this is one of the areas where when they created this law that they didn't go into any depth. They didn't define what is a shoulder holster, what is a belt holster. I've got a. If it's a belt holster, it's legal. Show, show that next slide that I've got, Lane. This is a belt holster. By law. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I mean, by the definition, this photo fits belt holster. So, I mean, retention, it's, this is, retention, though, is a smart idea with open carry. Well, there, there's so many things that come into effect, and this is where most people that, that are going to go through these classes are going to be familiar enough with a weapon to know that this is not any good. By law, though, this is a belt holster. Now, like I say, this is the kind of stuff that's going to come down the pipes through case law and stuff that, that all this, this is gray area, and, and it's, this is going to change. That one, this is not safe for nobody. I mean, it's not safe for, for anybody out there. It's not safe for the person that has this on. Uh, but, I mean, this is just, that, that's how big of a, a gray area that there is with, with the law. That this is considered a bell Go back on the slide, Joe. Uh, prior to January 1st, Texas Penal Code Chapter 46 prohibits carrying the handgun in plain view. Uh, the handgun cannot be openly discernible through ordinary observation, regardless of carried in a shoulder or belt holster. In other words, before the open carry, if you went to the store, you had your holster on. It was not against the law when you reached up on the top shelf if, if this much of your holster was shown. Okay. Uh, effective January the first, Texas Penal Code Chapter 46 will be amended. The House Bill 110 passed 84 Texas Legislature will allow persons license to carry a handgun. Now I want to make you know a lot of people out here. We're going to run into people who think 
hey, Texas passed open carry. January the 1st, we can open carry. And that's all they heard. We're going to run into a lot of people out here that are going to be open carry that are not going to be licensed. That's where we as citizens, good citizens, are going to have to inform everybody, look, you got to have a license to carry this. Family, friends, we need to, we need to be spreading the word. And that's one reason why we had this, this tonight. Uh, we just don't want people out here that haven't been through the, the course and haven't been through the training out here running around. I'm not saying that they're not qualified, but they're not licensed. Uh, <clears throat> Chapter 411 of the Texas, Texas Government Code to only carry a handgun in the same places that allow license to carry a concealed handgun with some exceptions. Provided the handgun is carried in a shoulder or belt holster. Texas license holders can openly carry concealed, uh, openly or concealed in any place not expressly prohibited by law. License holders may be subject to criminal charges for carrying a handgun in plain view unless carried in a, belt or sh in a shoulder or belt holster. A lot of people, they want to take their pistol. Maybe they want to slide it right down inside of the small of their back. It's not legal. Whether you're a license holder or not, it's not legal. It has to be holstered. Now, we go back to the picture. The holster, that's, that's, that's a great big, huge playing field, but it has to be holstered. You can't stick it in the small of your back or in the belt. It has to be in some type of way. Yes, ma'am. You were saying earlier that... Um a person has to have their license to be an open carry. Suppose you know someone who's doing open carry, but they don't have a license. Do we report them? Absolutely, it's against the law. Yes, you have to have a license, yes. Do we report people that we know don't have an open carry license to if they're carrying? Absolutely, I mean, it, it is violent. You have to have the license to be able to open carry. Now don't get constitutional carry, don't get long guns and handguns mixed up. Uh, that, that's two total different balls of wax. Uh, but if they're open, and, and, and this open carry goes into effect January the 1st, is strictly for handguns only. Any other? Yes, sir. You talk about carrying that small in your back. I've got a special deal of holster that goes there. If, if, if it's a holster and it's attached to your belt, it's legal. Did everybody hear his question? He asked. He has a special holster that goes into the small of his back. Does it? What about a what about a belt clip on the like some of the little LCPs and things like that? If if it's just on the gun, if it clips. If it's on the gun, but it clips on your belt, it's not. It's not holster. Okay. It has to be in a holster. Can you still conceal that way? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. You can conceal anyway. This is strictly for open carry. Yeah. You can conceal in any any form. If, he, his question was that some of these little LTC or LCP Ruger pistols and stuff, they come with a, a belt clip on them. If you want to carry concealed that way, absolutely. This, this open carry and this holster applies to open carry on. So if it's, if it's plainly visible to the average observer, it has to be in a holster. That's correct. Belt holster or shoulder holster. Right. Any other questions? A uh, person commits an offense if the person intentionally, knowingly, recklessly carries on or about his person a handgun and a motor vehicle or watercraft that is owned by the person or under the person's control at any time in which the handgun is in plain view unless the person licensed to carry a handgun under subset uh, chapter H, chapter 411 of the government code and the handgun is carried in a shoulder or belt holster. In other words, you can carry a, a pistol in your vehicle. You cannot carry it in plain sight. Whether you're, you're, if you're traveling down the road, you, if you have a license to carry it, it it's, it's for your body. It's not for a vehicle. So if, if you're driving down the road and I stop you and you've got a pistol throwed up on the dash, you're probably going to get questioned about it. It needs to be concealed in some way. Yes, sir. I understand the question about it. Uh, I'm a member of the Texas Law Shield based out of Houston, and in one of the things that they've released is for the vehicles, you can now, with the license to carry, it can be open in the vehicle. If you don't have the license to carry license, it has to be concealed still. So that's, that, I'm just making sure, because that's what I heard from lawyers, and I, wanna, I just want to make sure I heard from y'all. <clears throat> yes, I took that class. 
Okay. Raw shield. Uh -huh. And what you're saying is correct. Okay. If it, if it is open in plain sight, it has to be in a belt or shoulder holster. Otherwise, it has to be concealed. Okay, because that's not how they worded it. The way they worded it was like if, um, like they had, they, some companies make holsters for like right beside the seats and stuff, whereas before you had to have it under a seat in a glove box or something, and they were saying if you have the license to carry, you could have it to where it is seen. Not necessarily on you in the car, but if you're sitting in the driver's seat, and you've got a holster or something in between, let's say, the center console and, the, and, the, and your chair, that it could be seen. That's kind of how it was worded. I just wanted to make sure. Well, yes. The okay. seat has to be in a holster. Okay. A belt or shoulder holster. That's the only uh, requirements they have in the code. Okay. But, but in your vehicle, it doesn't have to be on your person, necessarily? If it's, it doesn't have to be on your person, but if it's in plain sight, it has to be in that belt or shoulder right. holster. So if I take my holster off, Lay it in the passenger seat. That's fine. That's my understanding. Yes, no. So the holster doesn't have to be attached to you. Okay. In the vehicle. No. Okay. Just my hips are. Any other question? That's probably clear as mud. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the way this is thing. This whole thing is going to be. This is the law right here, word for word. Cannot carry now. You can carry concealed as an ankle holster, but you cannot carry open. You can't run around with your breeches leg up and you. Well, I'm thinking shorts or something, you know. But it's and that, that that's that's going to open up a whole different, different you know. That's that's going to summer gets here. Everybody's wearing shorts and tennis shoes. You're not going to see near as many guns as you are now during the winter when everybody's got a coat and jeans on. Yes, ma'am. It's covered. It's not, it's not out in plain view. That goes back to the plain view. You can't have it laying out there in plain view. Just out in the seat, on your console, on your dash. You've got a, I mean, you've got a piece of paper over it. It's, it's concealed. Yes, ma'am. Um, do you guys have any classes for, uh, to get a license? or concealed gun or anywhere around here where would she I She asked know? if we had any classes. We do host classes here in Alto. They, they host classes all over. Uh, we will be hosting one here uh, after the first of the year. Okay, how much is it? Uh, that's, the classes are, most of them run 75 to to $100 for the class. Uh, there's three different phases that you go through to get these licenses. The class is a four hour class and then after that the range time, however long it takes you to, to qualify out of the range. Most of the time it's an hour to two hours. Uh, then you go online, Texas D, uh, DPS is contracted with an outside company to do all the fingerprints for your background investigation and everything. Once you pass that, then you send your fee into the state. I think, I think the state fee is about $170. I figured they would, but they didn't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first thing that we were taught to do was tell the officers that you had a, a gun in the VA. Is that still a prerequisite or just common sense? Yes, you should let them know. I mean, the officer, most people, when they hand your driver's license, they keep your driver's license and your, your concealed handgun license together, and the both of them. Most officers you run into, they're going to ask you, do you have your weapon with you? If you say yes, they may ask you where it's at. Me personally, I just leave it where it's at. I mean, you've already been through the background check. The state says you're good enough to carry a gun. That's good enough for me. Yes, that's why I say yes. Yes, hand, hand them the license. Any other questions? We go back to the holster requirements. Our holsters required to have certain types of restraining devices for open carried handguns? No. We 
it just has a holster. Like I say, the flip flop holster, the picture that we showed, it has no restraining devices at all. I mean, you reach in and pull it out. There's different levels of holsters. Uh, there's a single retention holster, double retention holster, there's triple retention holsters. It's just according to how many, how much retention and how, how hard you want it to be to get off of you. If somebody runs up and grabs it, uh, if somebody runs up and grabs you know, they make leather straps that attach to your belt where all you have to do is just lift your pistol out. Uh, they make them to where ours that we carry are, th this one here is a level two retention and uh, they make them to where you, there, there's three levels. Well, it's just according to how much, there's nothing by law saying that you have to have any of the three. Uh, when considering what type of holster a person wants to use, license should ensure they have the right type of holster to, for that make model. There's a thousand different kinds of handguns, there's a thousand different kinds of holsters. Just make sure whenever you're purchasing a holster that it's for the holsters made for the style of handgun that you have, the model of handgun. Uh, license should carefully, carefully consider the type of uh, restraints that they desire to carry and ensure they become proficient drawing from holsters. There's nothing against in the law that says that, you know, th this, is, this is pretty much common sense stuff. Uh, if you get out here and you're gonna open carry and you got a uh, triple retention holster on and it goes south, whatever situation you're in and you're trying to get to your pistol and you can't do it, uh, practice, practice whatever you have. Be comfortable with whatever you're gonna carry. Like I say, and that's, that's for your safety as well as, as everybody else's around. Any questions on holster requirements? Here's a uh, picture of a belt holster and a shoulder holster. The belt holster is attached to the belt, the shoulder holster is over the shoulder. I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like I say, people are gonna get creative with the flip-flop holster. Uh, if you've got enough money to buy a gun, go have enough money to be able to secure it. So that's for yourself and everybody else. Any questions on that? Criminal trespass by license holder. Uh, if you've taken the class, everybody <coughs> knows what a 30-06 sign is. Uh, the 30-06 sign, if it's posted outside, uh, any place that you go into, you are prohibited from concealed carrying in that place. Uh, the notice can be given written or orally. In other words, if it's not on the door when you come in, if it's not posted and the pastor of this church comes in, he sees you have a, a weapon on and he tells you, hey, we're not allowed to open carry in the building, you need to go put it in, the, in your vehicle. If you refuse to do that, you are criminal trespass by license holder. I mean, it, it's, it's plain and simple. If the person in charge of the building wants you to have a handgun, great. If they don't, they will tell you or they will post a sign. We're gonna show you the sign. Matter of fact, this is a sign here. The signs, there is stipulations on the signs. They have to be posted in contrasting colors, in plain view. Don't, you're, they don't expect you to look down at the bottom of the, the door when you come in. And they have to look like this. They have to be in black and white, one inch block letters posted in plain view. If you walk English and in Spanish. If you walk up to a store and it's got a round circle with a pistol and an egg on it, that is not legal. He right? asked if you walk up to the store, we've all seen the, the no guns, the, the circle with a pistol in it and a slash. No, you can walk right on past that sign and it, it has to be this sign. This is the only acceptable sign there is. Now we have two. This is the 30 yards. This is the 30 out 7 sign. The 30 out 6 sign looks just like this, but instead of 30 out 7, it says 30 out 6, and it, it's for concealed carry. Now, I will say this if you walk up to a door and they have a 30 out 6 sign there, and that's the only sign there, you can walk right on in with your gun out. <laughs> they have to have both signs taped on the door. If you have a 30 out 7 sign on there and there's no 30 out 6, Untuck your shirt, conceal it, and you can walk in. 
if they don't want any handguns in there, a lot of companies you see, they're, oh, well, they're banning guns. We're not going to eat that Whataburger because they don't want guns. If they've got both of them there, you can't walk in there with, with a weapon, concealed or open. My question is with the uh, 30 out 7 sign in Wells, uh, where I live, at the CBT, and I've noticed actually in Tyler as well, the banks, they have a 30 out 7 sign. Now, I realize it's not in effect, but I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm trying to figure it. It's, it's that big. It's not now, big. it's plain sight, straight, straight on the door. It's not big. I Okay. I'm just, I'm just asking just because. The, the law says on these signs they have to be one inch letters. Well. The caveat, though, to that being not legal is probably the owner of that building, though, is going to say something when you walk in, and at that point, at you that be point, you have to turn around and go put your weapon elsewhere. It can be written or oral, either one. Right. But if nobody says anything and you walk by that sign, you're not breaking the law. Okay. Because it's not a legal sign. Gotcha. Now, I will bring this point up. You go to Chili's and eat, and you've got your gun out. Just like this, you're open carry. And you get there, well, lo and behold, they've got the 30 out 6 sign, they've got the 30 out 7 sign. You walk back to your vehicle, you put your weapon in your truck. Before you get seated at the table, there's a bad guy standing outside watching you. He knows you just put a gun in your truck. Before you get seated at your table, he's broke into your truck and now he has your weapon. Pay attention to your surroundings. You know, just, just because people are watching you. Don't think they ain't. And just, just know what's going on around you. If you see somebody there, that just, what do you do? Do you go to the next restaurant? Or do you take the chance? You put it in your car and you go back in there and eat. Think about stuff like that. Uh, your best bet is go to another restaurant. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if they don't want you there, don't go there. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, like I say, the fine if you do, if you refuse to leave, uh, it's a Class C misdemeanor punishable by fine not to exceed $200. Could be enhanced to a Class A misdemeanor under certain circumstances. Certain circumstances, uh, maybe you're intoxicated. Uh, you know, if, yeah, there's, there's a variety of different things you your head. If they say, hey, don't bring a gun in here, just don't bring a gun in here. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Uh, exception to property owned or leased by a governmental entity and uh, not a premises or other place on which the license holder is prohibited from carrying a handgun. That's the only exception there are. Question. Uh, the 30 off 6 sign outlines specific requirements. Like I say, this is the 30 off 7. It's got to include English and in Spanish. And this is what we just went over. It's got to be color contrast, block letters, at least one inch in height. Uh, and it has to be dis displayed in a clear, clear place. Any questions? I'll leave nobody behind. I, I'm not trying to monopolize the time on no, this. You're... For instance, um, my wife and I, she drug me to Ikea. I hate it, but as I was walking in, it wasn't in clear, clear view of the doors, but I happened to look to the left 15 feet away from the door on an opposing wall. They had the 30 out 6 sign displayed correctly, but it was not in plain view. So, of course, I walked out to the car. No one saw. Sat in the car for a minute, acted like I was making a phone call, walked back in. Hypothetically, if someone were to walk into a situation like that, it's not displayed correctly. What kind of, I, I'm just curious, uh, and maybe this is a lawyer question, is what kind of trouble, but if, if it's not in plain view, what, what kind of legal ramifications are you looking at? Must be displayed in a conspicuous manner, clearly visible to the public. Fair enough for me. <laughs> Here's what you're going to get into. Now, this is me talking as a civilian, not as an officer. It's really according to how big of a hiding hole you run into that the cop is. And if he wants to make a name, maybe he needs to make an arrest. Whatever the case may be, use your common sense. Gotcha. Right. If it's concealed, it's one thing. You know, is the odds of anybody finding out that you have it? Probably not. Right. But, I mean, there's bad cops just like there's bad lawyers and bad doctors. I mean, I hate to say that, but that's the truth. No. Uh, you know. 
The, that's the law. That's no. Can't the I law just, be misconstrued? Absolutely. I just put down the way you should have looked. Fifteen foot down. The, and down the and compliance is going to go a long way, regardless. You know, I mean, if you don't see that sign and it means it's a mistake, we can all do that, right? Right. Absolutely. You know, and you say, hey, oh, my bad. I'll, you know, uh, even if even if they would call law enforcement, I would think most of the ones around here. Uh, would probably you know be understanding and, and they're going to question you that sort of thing. Would that be right? I mean, you're probably not going to cart somebody to jail if no. you know they're compliant. No. Now, one, we would make sure all of our businesses here that do have have signs. <coughs> if they're going to post the signs, that's their business. But we're going to have we're going to make sure they have them posted legally, right. where there is no black and white, where there is no gray. Area. It's a good question. Anybody else? Here's the 30 off 6 sign. We went over it. If all they have is a little circle with a handgun in it, it's not a legal sign. This is what the sign has to look like. Now, it doesn't have to have the little circle with the little colored gun in it, but it has to have this words. They have to be one inch in color contrast and place in a place where you can see it. Any questions? Uh, the 30 out 7 is the same thing we just went over. It's just the 30 out 7 instead of the 30 out 6. Go ahead. Like, this is the 30 out 7 side. English, Spanish, color contrasted, one inch letters, in plain view. Uh, government Code 41, uh, the 411.025 required to display license statute reads. If a license holder is carrying a handgun on or about the license holder's person, when a magistrate or peace officer demands that the license holder display identification, the license holder shall display both license holder, both license holder, driver's license, or identification certificate issued by the department and the license handgun, the holder's handgun license. In other words, if I as a cop you're at the store pumping gas, and I walk up to you and ask to see your handgun license. I see you have an open, you have a weapon that you're open carrying. You have to produce that license. Now, my department, I've told my guy, we're not fixing the, I don't stop every car out here going down the highway to check to see if every driver has a driver's license. I'm not going to do that. My department's not. I don't know what any other department that you're going to run into is going to do. They may do it for some time, and then it fall off. They may not. But you as a license holder, if you're asked to produce your identification, if you're pumping gas or buying a loaf of bread, you shall produce your license. That's the law. Like it or not, it's the law. Here in Alto, if I get a call, a man's pumping gas with a gun, I have to go check it out. I'm just doing my job. I'm not harassing you as a good citizen. As a license holder, I'm doing my job. I have to come and talk to you. And you have to produce a license. Yes? Scenario. I'm in the store. I have my gun on me. I just have my debit card or what have you in my purse with my license. My handgun license is in the car. Will I have that opportunity to go get it, or do I have to keep it on my purse? Here again, that's the law. It says you shall produce it. If you tell the officer, hey, I need to run to the, I need to run to this car, I don't have a problem with it, but you have to be able to produce it. Now, if it's in, you know, Lufkin, that's kind of hard to do. A car outside the grocery store, yes, 30 miles down the road, no. You're gonna be a responsible gun carrier, be a responsible license carrier. Any other questions? Man, y'all are easy. How, how are y'all going to deal with it when you walk into Lindsay's on the second? There's six people sitting around. I'm not saying, I'm just using it as an example. And there's six people sitting around with a handgun. Are y'all going to question them? We're going to pull up beside them with ours and eat with them. <laughs> That's, you know. But it's, it really and truly, it's going to be hard for the peace officers. It is, and that's one, one of the whole... You're not going to know whether you know, the guy's got a license for it or not. 
we go back to, they didn't think this out. They wanted open carry, carry. The governor said, if I'm elected and he comes before me, I will sign it into law, and that's the way it went down. There wasn't a whole lot of thought that went into this. You know, th this is another tool I'm going to use to haul the refugees coming in and the terrorists, you know, they're, well, they're just, hey, this is, this is a tool the bad guys are going to use to blend right in with you and me. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. It's, it's going to happen. And, I mean, we, we could spend all day, every day, running around here checking everybody that we saw with a handgun. We've got to go check them out. You know, when, when the concealed carry come out, back what year did it come out? 93, 4? Somewhere in that neighborhood. I was just a tiny tot. But I can remember all the uproar that we're going through right now. And really nothing happened. Everybody carried their pistols concealed and I, and I really hope that's the way it's going to be now. I don't, there, there's going to be some, some people alarmed uh, just because now you can see it. Uh, it's just something that we're going to have to, to wade through. And I know the Sheriff's Department are, are expecting, you know, they do most all the, the calls through the county. They come in, if you call 911 or anything, it goes to the Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm sure they have some kind of training with their dispatchers. I'm not real sure exactly what it may be, but you know they may go to asking questions. Whether it's, well, what is this person doing? Well, he's pumping gas. <laughs> well, we probably don't need four cops running 90 miles an hour to a man with a gun that's pumping gas. Uh, you know, now if he's squatted down out in the bushes in camouflage, then we probably need to get there and check him out. <laughs> but you know, it, it's just it's going to come. Situational stuff is going to come up to where, you know, pe people are going to call. And there's some people, I'll be honest with you, I talk to people every day now that have open carry. When you say I started advertising this, this course, they didn't have a clue that open carry had even passed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they can, but I, I talk to people daily. Well, I didn't even know that. How many of those people are going to call 911? Oh, my gosh, there's a guy with a, a man with a gun in the store. As, as a license holder, know that you're going to be asked to produce your credentials. Any other questions? All right, next. We've got to be getting close. Probable cause applies. If we have probable cause to come talk to you, we're going to come talk to you. Just know that. We're not, we're not harassing you. Uh, we're not you know, picking on you. We have a job to do, and, and we're going to do our job. Some people are not going to get a lot, but that's, we have a job to do, and we're going to do it. you want to add anything to that? We're getting close to being done, y'all. Remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you have to do unto you. I mean, it's, it's, that goes back to... You know, if I come to you and because you're buying a loaf of bread and you're carrying a, a gun in the store, if you give me attitude, I'm probably going to give you attitude back. As, as license holders, I know you've already been run through the ringer. You've had to go sit in this class. You've been bored off your gourd for four hours. The only good part about the whole deal was we got to go out to the range and shot 50 times. You know, now we've had to pay all this money. The state's got all this money of ours and we got a little plastic card you know, I understand you it, it's aggravating but but also as, as citizens you have to understand that we're doing it to protect you and everybody else you know, be happy you're happy we're happy you want to add anything to that yeah uh, I just want to go over some situations with us you know, we may uh, be called to a disturbance in progress, and 
you may be a citizen running up there with your open carry weapon. We get there. You have to understand our position. Yes, we may have to disarm you at that time for our own safety. If everything checks out, your handgun license, you'll get it back. And I just want everybody to understand that you know, we're going to look out for ourselves also. <laughs> and sometimes at these services, we may have four or five people. We may only be two deputies or two officers show up. So I just want everybody to understand you, know, you may have to go through that if you're at that scene with the weapon. Are there any questions about that? It's nice working in a town where I know most everybody. I know most everybody here. I grew up here, I know most everybody here. I know who's got a gun, who's got a license, who don't, most, most of them. Because most of them come through the classes that I've hosted. Uh, out in the county, these deputies from Jacksonville are down here working the south end of the county and vice versa. We've got deputies on, that, that live on the south end of the county that are working the north end of the county. They don't know. They don't know who you are. You're just a person with a gun running up there. We can't line everybody up and have everybody, while we've got three people fighting, checking everybody's credentials to make sure they can walk around our scene with a fire. Anybody? Questions? Complaints? Gripes? I really do. I mean, that's, you know. If, if somebody's going into a bank to rob a bank and there's two people there with a gun, who do you think their first targets are? It's you with a gun. I can't tell you to go, or to go concealed. There, there's times to where, I mean, when I'm off duty, there's times when I open carry, there's times when I conceal carry. It, it, it's situation. And that, that's something that everybody's going to have to make that, that decision in whatever situation that you're in. Questions? Like I say, it's, it's clear as mud. I mean, it really is. And there will be a lot of case law. There will be a lot of attorneys get rich, uh, richer uh, off of this. And We'll know more in a year. We'll know more in two years when it all comes down to the court system. And this doesn't have to be the end of the questions. If anybody here ever has any questions, you can feel free to <coughs> call the Sheriff's Department and ask for me. And I don't want to speak for you. Yeah, absolutely. Contact either one of us. I mean, in, in, at any time. If you have a question, call us. You bet. And I hope I hope we've cleared cleared some of the mud. The, the concern that I had about this when I first began to hear about it is how is this going to affect churches that uh, pass in our lives? Do I don't want anybody in here? I don't have to sign. And then I thought about it. I don't believe I do. I was going to leave the church this evening, not mine. But I don't believe as a pastor I want to sign on the door. Because, pardon the expression, some of these rag kids coming by and wanting to shoot, shoot up the church. I don't want to say, well, they're just going to run down there. they got to sign that. Ain't nobody in there on them. Well, I, most of our people are not going to carry anything. I will speak. I, I'm, I'm the head of our security at, at the church that I attend. Uh, we're not going to allow open carry. That, that, that's us. That's the decision that we make at the church. We encourage you to conceal carry. Um, we, we will have the 30 off 7 posted there at, at the door uh, to where you're not, not allowed to open carry. That, that's the decision we made. There may be some that, that make different decisions. Not Are we right or they're wrong? No. That's just what we felt is best for us. Not to conceal. Right. Now, we encourage you to conceal. If you've got a concealed carry, you're the good guys. Go to my next slide. I think that's my last slide. 
All the carriers were the good guys. The sale carriers were the good guys. And if you don't want to post a sign, you still have a right to tell that person, you know, face to face, that you don't want them anywhere. Open carry. But here's what you'll get into there. You've allowed four of your church members to come in that's open carry. And then we've got this guy, other guy that we've never met before, that's a little rough around the edges. And he's going to walk in, and you're going to ask him to leave, and everybody else is sitting there. You may run into a problem. You want to be consistent. With whatever you do, you want to be consistent. Yes, sir. You know, there's problems all over this country. Florida has the hurricanes. California has earthquakes. And we have the Texas legislature that meets every two years. And uh, they pass a lot of laws we like. They pass some laws we don't like sometimes. But I can assure you, in two years, when they meet again, there's going to be a lot of changes in this law. Because they're going to, they won't know what problems exist until we go through all these laws. Meanwhile, we're the guinea pigs out here, all of us. We don't want to infringe on anybody's rights, but we've got to, we've got to enforce the law. We all like our lives. I have, when I was in high school, every boy there had a pickup, and in the back window there was a shotgun and a 22 rifle, and the truck wasn't even locked. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not that way anymore. And this is a big old county. You know, we go, we've got 1,050 square miles here, and unfortunately, we have to call on these small agencies smaller than us, to help us sometimes. Some office I only have three, four, or five deputies out at a time. You know, we go within 13 miles of Lufkin city limits and within seven miles of Tyler city limits. There's a lot of folks in between. And we don't worry about the concealed handgun uh, carriers at all. In our church, we're taking this stance that I'm on the security team at our church. And uh, we're not gonna put up anything now, we we encourage, uh, we know we have some concealed handgun members that go to our church. We don't say anything about it. But if, if somebody comes in our church after the first year with an open carrier, we're going to ask them, to, you know, would you mind going back out and putting your gun in the car or whatever? We just don't want to open carry our church. And that's, you know, every church is different. I know there's going to be some churches that encourage it, open carry. That's, that's between the pastor and the congregation. Every church is going to be different. And there's going to be some places you may want to go into and you think you ought to be able to go into, but if that sign's there, or if they don't want you there, you're just going to have to do one of two things. Go put your gun up or leave. And uh, I appreciate the interest here. I, this is, I don't think Prohibition had this much interest in it when it did. <laughs> and I'm very surprised that Texas has waited as long as they did to do this. I don't know if there's a way on the Republican governor or what. But uh, it, it's the law, and it's going to be here in just a few days. And we're all going to have to learn. <coughs> Thank you. I also want to mention one other thing. A lot of places. Yes, sir. couple of things that I want to add before we leave. There, there is several places that you cannot carry a, a weapon, whether the signs are posted or not. Uh, one, that's a polling place at an election. If they're holding polling an election, you can't carry it there. If you're licensed or not, most of them have a, a sign out just for friends and giggles. But you can't carry it. Two, inside the secured, the secured part of an airport. You cannot carry your weapon inside the secured area of an airport. You can walk to the baggage plane with a gun, and unless there's signage there, you can claim your baggage, but you cannot go into the secured area. Uh, you cannot carry your weapon inside any place that sells 51, that has 51% or more of their income come off of alcoholic beverages. In other words, bars, nightclubs, et cetera, you can't carry your weapon there. Uh, and that sign is something totally different. We showed you two signs. I wish I had one. I, I don't. Uh, but it's it's a sign, and it has 51% in red, and it, it, they're pretty big. 51%, and then they've got some wordage on it. 
uh, with a circle around it. If they have to give you 1% or more of their, their sales from alcoholic beverages, you can't carry in there. Uh, inside schools, you can't carry inside a school. Like I said earlier, I know campus carry takes effect August of this year. That's a whole different critter. Whole different animal. Uh, school activities, i.e. outdoor football games or, or wherever, uh, if they do not have them posted, you can carry them. If it's not inside the premise of the school, you can't go to your, your child's Christmas party and carry a gun, but you can go to your child's football game if they don't have it posted. Just look for the signs, and like, like the sheriff said, common sense goes a long ways. It, it's in short supply, but it, 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 whatever you have, use it. Yeah, federal building's another one you can't go, and uh, in any building that, that houses uh, a court. Uh, now, I will tell you, there is some attorney general rulings that's come down. Uh, smaller cities, like uh, our city, for example, we have a court in one end of the building. Our court clerk sits in another end of the building. Uh, there is some attorney general opinions that have come out. There's more attorney general opinions coming out. Whether or not you, we can tell you that where she sits at up front is the same place that you walk in and pay your water bill. Whether or not we can tell you, no, you can't carry it. And that, that's, that's a gray area. And it's, it's all that's coming down the pipe. It'll all be clear in a year or two. So, but common sense, it goes a long way. Anything else? That's it. Once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, again, my name is Captain Butler. You can reach me at the Sheriff's Office. And I'll take all your questions. Anytime. You need to contact me. Y'all know where to get a hold of me. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for their attendance tonight. Uh, thank everybody for their. Yes, sir. we got another question. Financial institutions and hospitals, if they have it posted, you cannot go in there. If they do not, you can go. Post office is a federal building. You cannot carry in a federal, federal building. I just want to make a general statement. Um, one of the best things, and I'm just going to encourage it. I'm not making a plug. I don't get paid for them. I'm a pastor. But the Texas Law Shield is a great tool to know the legal ramifications of uh, get, if you get in trouble with something or whatnot. They also have lawyers who specialize in gun law that... You know, if there's if there's a gray area that for some reason y'all can't answer, that I, I, I've called them a couple of times in regards to some of this, because we have a, I have an Angelina County deputy in my in my congregation, who he didn't know some of it, so I called Texas Law Shield, and they were able to fill in the gaps as to where the gray areas were. So that's a that's just a just saying that's a handy tool just in case you know. There there's several different organizations out there like the Texas Law Shield. I have used their website uh, to look up some, some different stuff. Uh, the Attorney General's Office, DPS Office, those, those are all great websites if, if you have a question. Any other questions? When did we lose our right to be able to carry? When did you lose your right to be able to carry? Yeah, it's our constitutional right to keep and bear arms. When did, when did it become illegal to carry a man? <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I mean, we're I all hungry, answer, and we want to go home. <laughs> everybody wants to get out of here before midnight. <laughs> but I appreciate everybody's interest. Like I said, I hope you clarified some stuff. I don't think we need uh, a bunch of angry people. Houston, before you coming out, spending an hour, hour and a half with us. Uh, hope everybody has a safe <clears> time. <throat> Thank you all.